The Lord says, I am pondering thoughts of peace and not of affliction. You shall call upon me, and I will hear you, and I will bring you back from all the lands where you are held captive. Today we celebrate the 33rd Sunday in Ordinary Time. The parish bulletin, found at the entrances and on our webpage, gives the readings and responses for Mass. Congregational singing is currently suspended as part of our COVID protocols. The celebrant of this Mass is Father Eubel. Let us stand and begin. Dicit Dominus, ego cogito, cogito azionas pacis, et non In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Our brothers and sisters in Christ, we gather today on this 33rd Sunday of the church here. Let us begin by pausing to acknowledge our sins so as to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only be Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. 
Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you, for it is full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy the author of all that is good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Proverbs. When one finds a worthy wife, her value is far beyond pearls. Her husband, entrusting his heart to her, has an unfailing prize. She brings him good and not evil all the days of her life. She obtains wool and flax and works with loving hands. She puts her hands to the distaff and her fingers ply the spindle. She reaches out her hands to the poor and extends her arms to the needy. Charm is deceptive and beauty fleeting. The woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a reward for her labors, and let her works praise her at the city gates. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Concerning times and seasons, brothers and sisters, you have no need for anything to be written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief at night. When people are saying peace and security, then sudden disaster comes upon them like labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness for that day to overtake you like a thief. For all of you are children of the light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as the rest do but let us stay alert and sober. 
the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus told his disciples this parable. A man going on a journey called in his servants and entrusted his possessions to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to a third one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. Immediately, the one who received five talents went and traded with them and made another five. Likewise, the one who received two made another two. But the man who received one went off and dug a hole in the ground and buried his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants came back and settled accounts with them. The one who received five talents came forward bringing the additional five. He said, Master, you gave me five talents. See, I have made five more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. Then the one who had received two talents also came forward and said, Master, you gave me two talents. See, I have made two more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. Then the one who received the one talent came forward and said, Master, I knew you were a demanding person, harvesting where you did not plant and gathering where you did not scatter. So out of fear, I went off and buried your talent in the ground. Here it is back. His master said to him in reply, you wicked lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I did not plant and gather where I did not scatter. Should you not then have put my money back in the bank so that I could have got it back with interest on my return? Now then, take the talent from him and give it to the one with ten. For to everyone who has, more will be given, and he will grow rich. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And throw this useless servant in the darkness outside, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Just a brief announcement today. I'd like to invite your generosity. I'm so grateful for it. Today we take up the first of our four monthly extra heat collections. We do have envelopes just about everywhere. I even see them right down here on the communion rail, but all the tables on your way out, if you'd be so kind as to make an extra offering, it really does help to defray the costs associated with heating the cathedral. Your generous support is as needed as it is appreciated. And we do this, just so you know, once per month uh, throughout the winter months. Thank you. I suspect all of us have had at least one or two experiences of hearing a joke and realizing we don't get the punchline. Everybody else laughs, and we're left sitting there. It's an embarrassing situation. 
we feel left out in the cold, out in the darkness. A joke is one thing, but nobody wants to be left out in the darkness with respect to matters of faith. We want to be knowledgeable. We want to be alert. We want to be engaged, at least I hope we do. And in order to do this, we are told we must stay alert. To be a child of faith, to be a child of the light, means that we dedicate ourselves to the Lord. And we actively seek to engage him and engage the saving message of Jesus. You see, being passive never works well when we're talking about our faith. And that's what I want to share with you just for a few minutes tonight. If we are not grounded, we will falter. If we are not rooted, we will wither. Our faith may flourish for a time, but it will never last. Like the snow this time of year, it will probably all go away before it gets cold enough to stay on the ground. If we sit back passively, we're like the servants who buried their talents in the ground, doing nothing with them whatsoever. It may seem as though the master is extremely harsh, overly harsh, but of course, this is to make a spiritual point. We've been given something. If we do nothing with it, if we bury it in the ground, we have squandered our rightful gifts. Today's gospel reminds us of our need to use our gifts for the good of the church. Now, not everyone can volunteer every week be an RCIA sponsor, for example, coming every Thursday evening. Not everybody can come to daily Mass. But there are things that you can do to be more active in your faith. First of all, I thank you for being here tonight. That's something. None of you has to be here. You choose. And I acknowledge that and thank you for it. You could volunteer to serve as a lector. You could help out as an usher. You could join That Man As You, an online program every Saturday morning for men of the parish. And while understandably, volunteer opportunities are very limited right now during the pandemic, this will not last forever. And there will be more opportunities to serve. Another way of burying our talents is the degree to which some people have become very shy about their Catholic faith. And there are all sorts of reasons for that, I understand. In fact, shy might be too gentle of a word. Some are downright afraid of expressing their faith at the workplace and have told me on numerous occasions they're concerned that by expressing those views, that might affect their job. It's almost unheard of, but it happens. Though it pains me to say so, it is not in vogue to be a practicing Catholic today. And whether through our own self-inflicted wounds in the church, and I say that as a church leader, and the ways in which we have totally messed things up, or whether it's societal changes that have just picked up steam over the course of a generation, these things all coalesce together so that families don't feel as comfortable in their faith. They don't want to lead a grace in a, in a restaurant. They're afraid to say something to their friends about needing to leave a party because they've got to go to church the next morning. And, and the list could go on and on. That's the reality now. And we have to do something to change things up. I urge you and challenge you to resist this tendency to withdraw like a little turtle into a corner, into your shell. Now is the time that we need you to step up, to be part of the solution, despite the many challenges 
of people of faith today. The laity play an indispensable role in making known and loved the name of Jesus Christ. And your input in the church is critical. I think of some of the key groups here in the parish. I look forward to parish council meetings, to finance council meetings. These are wonderfully talented people who give of themselves. Today we had a, a parish retreat, archdiocesan retreat really going on. So I wasn't able to attend a virtual meeting of the Men's Association, but they are another group that does such wonderful things in the parish. And the ladies group is kind of temporarily on hold or on Fridays, I pray with the Divine Mercy Cynical here at the Sacred Heart Chapel. So things are still happening, but the support of the laity, the wise counsel, the advice, the suggestions, they are indispensable to making this parish continue to do what we are called to do. And so I thank you for all the ways that you serve. I think tonight's gospel is a challenge for all of us to stand up, not be afraid. At school, if you're, if you're at a school and you see things happening, your faith can help you to know how to respond when you see something happening or someone talking about another. You can steer the conversation away, change the subject, distract them so that you're not just backstabbing a teacher or another classmate. There's so many ways that we can take our faith and help to transform the world. And I'll, I'll leave you with this thought. I think there's actually a freedom that comes with being unapologetic about your faith. I'm not talking about standing on the street corner and waving your arms. Despite the many challenges in the church, and yes, at times, even the doctrinal confusion that is as frustrating as it is inexcusable when it comes from church leaders, rest secure in the knowledge that living the fullness of your faith is not only possible, it is transformative. It truly is. It will give you the greatest sense of freedom you've ever experienced. Just let go and let the Lord lead you. My brothers and sisters, giving back to the church has an effect. It brings to light the spiritual growth that you experience little by little. Almost imperceptibly, it's happening. And your spiritual portfolio develops, it diversifies, it transforms. And it's wonderful to be part of it. We are not in the darkness any longer. Let us live our faith in the light and allow that light to shine through our daily lives so that it serves as a leaven for a world so in need of God's love. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Together now we profess our common faith by praying the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. 
and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As members of God's household, alert and ready to serve, in confidence let us turn to the Lord with all of our needs. For members of the church, may we discern the gifts and talents that God has given to us and put them at the service of others, including here in our parish. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civic leaders, may they enact laws that protect the integrity of family life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those whom God is calling to priesthood, diaconate, or consecrated life, may they never be afraid of answering the Lord's call to put their talents at the greater service of the church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For married couples, may they grow in their love for each other each day and keep God at the very center of their homes. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parents, for all parents, may they be given wisdom, strength, and courage to do what is right and truly best for their children. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead during this holy month of remembrance, may they share the Master's joy and enter their heavenly home as good and faithful servants. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, as we seek the grace to use our talents, help us to share in your joy. Please hear and answer our prayers. We make them in faith and trust through Christ our Lord. The Cathedral Parish is dependent upon the financial support of her cherished parishioners and many welcome guests. On the Cathedral website, there is a button from which to donate electronically, and there is a QR code in the Parish Bulletin. Or you may place your offering in any of the four drop boxes located at the Selby and Dayton entrances. We thank you for your generosity. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. 
Grant, O Lord, we pray, that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and gain us the prize of everlasting happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You form man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Paul and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. 
to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you, you take, take away the, the sins, sins of the world, world. Have, have mercy on us. Lamb, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have, have mercy on us. Lamb, Lamb of God, God, you take away the sins of the world, grant, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. An act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity through Christ our Lord. I have just a few brief announcements today, so thank you for your attention before our final blessing and communion. As always, I do invite you to take the bulletin home with you or deposit in the recycling boxes, boxes on your way out, but please don't leave them in the pews. The month of Holy Souls continues, um, so we still have an opportunity for you to write the names of deceased loved ones. We are collecting them every single week and placing them on the high altar uh, in this month of remembrance. Beginning on the first Sunday of Advent, so just two weeks from tonight, the distribution of Holy Communion will be switching back to its normal place at Mass. So we're giving you some time to prepare for that as well as our, our liturgy guides and music. But please remember we'll follow the same procedure starting with the side and moving towards the center. But then you go back to your pews. We'll have the final prayer and the announcements and then the dismissal. And when it comes time to dismiss people, that's when we'd ask that you just kind of Take it easy and allow the people on the sides to leave first so not everyone's heading out the door at the same time. So we do still need to organically disperse people. So thank you for that. That change takes place on the first Sunday of Advent. Please know again that your generosity to this parish is truly appreciated, especially the sacrifices you're making. To those who may be watching on, uh, online, we miss you so much, but we're so grateful that you continue to join us uh, online. As you saw in the bulletin today, I had an email from somebody in India who watches daily Mass. So it's, it's just amazing what technology can do to keep us together. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Oh, and just remember one more thing I forgot. For those who do wish to receive communion on the tongue, that will take place in this center aisle. Thank you.